Okay. In the medial incisor section, we can ask you about the frontal sinus, sphenoidal air sinus, in the nasal cavity, we can ask about the three superior, middle, inferior conca, the three meatuses. Meatuses we don't ask in the exam, but uh, the conca we can ask. This is sphenoethmoidal recess. In the nasopharynx, there is opening of the auditory tube. It's covered or guarded by salpingo pharyngeus muscle. When covered with the mucous membrane, it is called as salpingo pharyngeal fold. These are pharyngeal tonsils on the roof of the nasopharynx. This is oral cavity. The partition between them is heart palate. Heart palate is formed by a maxillary bone, a part, palate and part of the maxillary bone and the palate and bone. This is soft palate. Soft palate, the, this muscle which is hanging on the posterior median surface of the uh, palate, this is uvula. The muscle is musculus uvuli, covered by mucosa it is called as uvula. This is tongue, cut section of the tongue is genioglossus. If this muscle is asked, you have to write genioglossus. Which muscle? The other muscle from the genial tubercle, this is mandible, goes to the hyoid bone. This is hyoid bone, number 8. Then this hyoid bone, this is geniohyoid. So genioglossus to the tongue, geniohyoid to the hyoid bone. From the, uh, this is uh, hyoid bone, epiglottis, some part of the thyroid cartilage is seen and some part of cricoid cartilage is seen. So here, uh, in the oral cavity, you can see the two folds, one anterior, one posterior, mm -hmm. to the tonsils. The palate and tonsils are in the tonsillar sinus. Sinus is formed by the two folds, one fold from palate to the tongue, called as palatoglossal arch or fold, and one from palate to the pharynx, palatopharyngeus arch. Between these two folds, there is a sinus in which the palate and tonsils are placed. This so 14 number is palate and tonsils. Oropharynx then continues with the Laryngopharynx. This is laryngopharynx which is going on and this is larynx. For the larynx, we have another model. If you see the inside of the larynx, the inside of the larynx, from here you can see these are the muscles of the larynx. This is uh, epiglottis. Just uh, behind this, here you can see the uh, cricoid cartilage, uh, thyroid cartilage. Uh, these are the inside of the larynx. In the inside of the larynx, there are two folds. The upper fold is called a vestibular fold. The lower fold is called as vocal, vocal. vocal folds or two vocal cords. Above this, this membrane is called as quadrate membrane or quadrangular membrane. Below, this is called as conus elasticus. Okay? okay. Now, if you see from epiglottis to the retinoids, this is called as eriepiglottic fold. From retinoid to this. Can you see these two? These two bulging is because of corniculate and cuneiform cartilages, which are present in the eripiglottic fold. Okay? okay. After that, here, this is the model. Uh, can you please bring that model with the muscles? Model of the larynx. In the model of the larynx, until you can see the uh, hyoid bone with the lesser and the greater cornua, thyroid cartilage. This is epiglottis. Then below thyroid cartilage, this arch of the cricoid cartilage, which continues posteriorly with the lamina, lamina of the cricoid cartilage. On the lamina posteriorly, there are two arytenoid cartilages, which are moving. Right. Here we can ask you about the thyroid cartilage, uh, thyroid yeah, gland. Yeah. Thyroid gland is formed by two lobes. Only one lobe is shown here. And the two lobes are connected by a thyroid stomach. Okay? Now here if you see, this is the uh, uh, thyroid uh, arytenoid cartilage. We'll see this better in this model. So in this model, in front you can see thyroid cartilage, in cricoid cartilage, the muscle here is cricothyroid muscle. This is the only extensive muscle, which is intrinsic muscle, which is placed outside. Here you can see between the hyoid bone and the thyroid cartilage. This is thyrohyoid muscle. Right? Then one muscle from thyroid uh, cartilage to the sternum is sternothyroid. just below it, this is sternothyroid. Uh, the muscle present here between the epiglottis and the thyroid is thyroepiglotticus. Posteriorly, if you see, this is the lamina, onto the lamina there is two arytenoids. If you see from inside, this is the epiglottis which closes the inlet and opens the inlet of the larynx. 
here you can see these two as folds these are vocal folds or vocal ligaments now these vocal ligaments they are going from the vocal process to the thyroid cartilage from inside from vocal process to the thyroid cartilage thyroid cartilage at the attachment of the epiglottis and the thyroid cartilage these two vocal folds the muscle around it is called as vocalis it is a part of the muscle which is going from arytenoid to the thyroid cartilage which is called as thyroid arytenoids so the medial fibers of thyroid arytenoids is only called as vocalis this muscle is around the vocal cords so when they contract they decrease the length and they relax the vocal folds so these two are the muscles which relax the vocal folds these are thyroid arytenoids and vocalis the muscle which is present outside that is crico thyroid when it is contracting it pulls the cricoid cartilage forwards that causes backward displacement of the arytenoids add to the vocal process of the arytenoids the vocal ligaments are attached so that causes tension and that causes increase the length and tension is caused by crico thyroid okay laryngeal inlet close and open by the muscles which are around it the muscle from the cricoid from the arytenoid cartilage to the epiglottis eri epiglottis eri epiglottis and the oblique arytenoids can you see here oblique oblique fibers these are oblique arytenoids and the transverse fibers transverse arytenoids oblique arytenoids continues as eri epiglottis these two muscles when they are contracting they close the inlet of the larynx the muscle which is attached here is thyro epiglottis when it will contract it will open the epiglottis so opening by thyro epiglottis closing of the inlet by oblique arytenoids and that continues as eri epiglottis okay. so these two muscles are opening the now adduction and abduction can you see these fibers these are from the cricoid cartilage to the muscular process of the arytenoids these two are posterior crico arytenoids now posterior crico arytenoids and these two fibers can you see this these are lateral arytenoids lateral crico arytenoids mm -hmm. so lateral crico arytenoids thyro arytenoids vocalis uh thyro epiglotticus all these muscles are adductors they causes adduction of the vocal cords only posterior cricoid nodes these are the abductors of the vocal folds right